Another essential feature is the foreground obscuration. So what that is is when you have a lens flare that goes behind an object and blinks out. So here we have an example of a 2D lens flare on this title and what I want it to do is blink out as it goes behind it. So we go into the effects controls is scroll down to foreground layers and what we do is we set the layer to the source of what we want it to go behind. In this case the title. So now the lens flare position will blink out as it goes behind that text. But we also have some control over that. First we can sample the color but we can also sample the method if we want to do an alpha or a luma or a luma invert. Another thing I want to do is make a copy of the optical flares. So I'll choose edit, duplicate and then I'll go down into the effects and I'm going to link the position of a second copy to the position of the first copy. So I'll use an expression, I'll alt click on the position X, Y and then I will pick whip to the position of the top copy. So this is a common thing that you'll be doing when you want to make more complex scenarios. So I'm going to take the first copy, put it below the title and then I'm going to shut the foreground off. I don't actually want it to blink out. So then if I take the top copy, move it, what you'll see is the main flare will go out but we'll still have some stuff in the background. And then I like to go in and maybe make a few changes to the lens flare maybe add a shimmer, maybe you know, tweak some of the settings so that it's a little bit different. You can go into the global parameters and change the global random seed just to give it a few random changes so it doesn't look exactly the same. Then maybe turn the scale down, maybe turn the brightness down. And then as we move the first flare, it's as if there's volumetric light behind it as it's obscuring. So that's one cool example but you can also do 3D obscuration. So if we take a look at another example here we have a light moving across some layers and you can see it's going behind them. Now as I showed you before it can also sample the color. So if I lower the opacity of these layers and then let the lens flare go behind them you'll see the color of the lens flare changes to match that layer. So that's another cool feature. But let's take a look at this example. We have three solids and I want to set this up from scratch. So I'm going to create a new solid. Choose OK. Then I'll choose Effect, Video Copilot, Optical Flares. And you can set it to render on transparent so that you get rid of the background. I like to leave it on black and change my transfer mode to screen. So to get it to work with the 3D lights, we just change the positioning mode from 2D to track lights. So instantly, we have three flares on three lights and if I scroll around, you can see it's 3D. But they're not obscuring behind the layers. So if we go into the foreground, we set up the three layers, first solid, second solid, third solid and we input those into the foreground layers. Then the 3D position of the lights will then register so that those blink out when they get blocked. So if I hide that stuff we can see it a little bit better. So there's our lens flare, kind of blinks out there. Now if you're working with a 3D render, what you want to do is export a mat of a layer that you want to obscure, for example the ball, and then optical flares can use that mat to obscure a light as it travels behind it. And that's how we use the foreground obscuration.